What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and this is going to be a quick little VGC video. I want to talk about terrestrialization again because I'm really excited for this mechanic. I think it's going to be really cool. And I want to kind of talk about the old mechanics of Pokemon VGC and competitive history and kind of how, why I think terrestrialization is going to be one of the, if not maybe the best so far. And let's talk about it. So first I want to talk about Megas. So I I was a huge fan of Megas. I thought Megas were really cool. And what Megas did is your Meg whoever your Mega Evolution was was the, the carry of your team. They were the center point of your team. They came to every game you brought the every every match you always brought your Mega and that was the, the hyper focus of the of the team building. And I really liked that. I really liked having that like center point of the team building, which just isn't quite as much there in other formats you know like restricted formats it is but i hate those <laughs> i just thought mega's really cool so you'd have something like mega kangaskhan and you try to you'd put that on your team like okay this is a really strong mega and then you'd build your team around it so wait that's why you had chalk you would have chalk in in like 2016 which was just a crazy good team that would work around mega kangaskhan and just be very universally good and really hard to to, to deal with uh, Pachir Seijun Park's Pachirisu worked because of Mega Gyarados. It worked because it would it would follow me and let his Gyarados set up and sweep. That's why Pachirisu worked. Like it, it, it kind of made Pokemon viable to make this Pokemon work. You're like that's the whole reason Pachirisu worked was because by well, Pachirisu was good because it would make this Gyarados work. Or maybe you could put it like like a, a Mega Charizard Y or something. Like that that's what made Pachirisu good. My, I guess the peak of my VGC career was around 2017 time in uh, Gen 7. I was, I made a really good Mega Tyranitar team, and my entire team was built around making this Mega Tyranitar work after I got Dragon Dance off. You know, my, my EV spread looked something like I had a little bit into, I just want to talk about this because I miss it. I had a little bit into attack, like I think I had 200. I had exactly 200 into attack with Adamant. And enough speed to outspeed everything after two dragon dances, and enough HP to just be able to, you know, get a lot of hits off, kind of thing. I think I had something like this. I don't even, I actually don't even think I was adamant. I think I was something like this. Along the lines of that. But I would, you know, you could make, you could make a team where I'm going to make my mega evolution, you know, work. And I build my entire team around it. I had, I had Tapu Bulu to, give him some extra recovery and also scare away water types and even like he had grass and he could handle landorus i had melodic to help with the landorus i had Togekiss and amoongus i had amoongus on the point at some point uh to help redirect and let tyrantar set up i had nido king to scare to to help sweep with it i had extra drill at some point too to try to you know sweep alongside mega tyrantar i can't remember the rest of the team i think i had conk there there at some point or some fighting type but it was building around the Mega. And then in Generation 7, we had Z-Moves. And you didn't necessarily build your entire team around Z-Moves, but there was still, like, a little bit to there. Like, like Psyching, like Psyching MZ, Psyche MZ, Tapu Lele, for example, was, like, a really strong attack. And so you'd build your team around Lele, because Lele could just one-shot something. Or, or, like, Golduck in the rain. You would, you would, you know, build around this. Or I had Tapu Bulu was a big part of my team building because a tap Bulu with Grassinium Z could one shot a Landorus. Which is a big which is a big issue for my Tyranzar. Or even like a Tracheon or something. And then in generation eight we had G we had Dynamax and G Max and this was a lot more like Megas in terms of you would team build around who you Dynamax. You would you would have a Dynamax focused character like you would your 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 Charizard if you had a Charizard on your team, you're Dynamaxing that every time you brought it to the game. If you had a Colossal on the team, you're Dynamaxing that every single time you bring it to the match. Or like a Defiant Thunderous, you know? Like if you have Defiant Thunderous, every time the Thunderous comes out, you, you try to soak up the Intimidate from, from Landorus or Incineroar, and then you Dynamax. And that was a very centralizing part in team building. Terrestrialization, I don't think it's going to be that, because... Terrastalizing doesn't use an item, and every Pokemon can do it. You can only use it once per battle, kind of like just like Dynamax. 
So it's like Dynamax is kind of the same thing, but there's clear winners for Dynamaxing, and there's just some Pokemon that were like clearly. Like Dynamaxing was just such a crazy change. I think Terrastalizing is going to be a still a big change, but it's not going to completely like change everything about the match. You know, like the, the Dynamax thing is just like you have a raid boss now I have to deal with. Terrastalizing isn't going to do that much. I think it's going to. So I think it's going to be really cool. And I think there's three way. There's two main ways. That Dynamax, or sorry, Terrastalizing is going to be used, you know, offensively or defensively. And I think the best Pokemon at Terrastalizing, who are really going to change the meta, or like, who are really going to fit into the meta, if we're just, I'm just going to talk about like a general meta sense. I think a, a, a Generation 9 Terrastalization meta is going to be defined by Pokemon that are flexible and can handle, you know, I, I don't think these like gimmicky Pokemon are going to work out as well. I think it's going to be Pokemon that can handle, you know, the the meta Pokemon, even when they change into something crazy. So, like, a really good offensive Terra-type Pokemon would be something like a Regieleki or Electric-types, offensive Electric-types turning into Ice. That Bolt Beam coverage is really crazy. Something like a Regieleki would be crazy because the way that Terrastalizing works is when you change it to your new type, for example, Regieleki turning into Ice, you still keep your old type... Your original types stab so Regieleki would still have the electric stab and with transistor would still have you know a crazy boost to the electric type stab and then when it turns into an ice type you now get the two times modifier or adaptability basically to your to your new type so you don't just get stab on it you get two times so you you turn to a new type you get that defensively but you also get the adaptability boost so there's two big things to terrestrializing is the a defensive typing and the adaptability, basically, from it. So, an example of an, a super offensive terrestrialization could be something like Regieleki. You know, really strong electric type is only stopped by ground types, but now what do you do when it turns into an ice type and now it's killing on ground types? What what do you do? <laughs> you know, Alecki, I really hope Alecki's not in the game because it's going to be really stupid. Just trying to deal with an ice type Alecki that's just hitting you for really hard. Just like, you can't, you can't stop this thing. It's going to be really annoying. Or something like, you know, a Gastrodon usually sits in the face of, of Kyogre, but what if Kyogre turns into a Grass type and now uses, you know, Terra Blast? I have Terrain Pulse over instead of a Terra Blast. Terra Blast Grass, you know, and the Gastrodon just gets destroyed. So it, I feel like a Pokemon like Gastrodon, whose sole purpose is is Storm Drain and encountering water types isn't going to work because what if the water type ever just turns into a grass type and now your entire plan is out the window and Gastrodon's just just going to get slapped by what this by the thing it's supposed to counter that's what i think is going to happen with the meta that's like my personal opinion of what i think is going to happen to the meta i think the pokemon we're going to see be good are going to be pokemon that can handle that can maybe be, be a counter to something and even if they turn to a different type to beat it they're still going to be like okay with it you know i, I think it's going to be flexible pokemon glue pokemon building a team to handle any situation because you have no idea when the lander is turns into a water type or if the incineroar turns into a fairy type for some reason like just random things that people are going to find random things to make it work and these are my two examples for offensive typing i think there's also if you just use terrestrialization for just purely defensive you know imagine turning your lander is whose only weaknesses are water and ice into a water type so now the counter you brought for it, you know, your Milotic, let's say, or your Tapu Lele, is no longer going to hit this thing for super effective with Ice Beam or, or, or Scald because it's now Water type and it's still going to have the stab on its Earthquake and stuff. So it can still just be the same annoying, scary Landorus. And it just has a different set of weaknesses. And I mean, you're not going to. You're not going to want to bring an Electric type on a Landorus because of Earthquake is just going to kill it. And if, if you have bring a grass type on a water type landorus, it can just U turn out, hit the grass type for super effective, and just leave. Or let's say like a flying type Heatran. It's just a random example. You know, you, you try to deal with Heatran. I mean, I'm using some, some quad weakness examples because it's just pretty clear, exa clear examples. You know, ghost type Tyranitar is the same thing. You know, uh, a, tar a Heatran you try to, you try to handle with a, a ground type move or maybe a fighting type move. You turn into flying type, and even though who cares about the flying type offensively? Like you can beat flying types now, cool, whatever. You already beat grass types, 
but you're now no longer weak to ground. Instead, you're immune to it, and you're no longer weak to fighting. And now this thing has now people try to beat you with a rock type, which you have flash cannon to beat the rock types. You have or like ice type move, which no one's ever going to try to use ice type move on against a heatran or a uh, electric type move. You've got like earth power to help take care of that. So just purely defensive makes makes you have, makes the opponent have to deal with your Pokemon in a new light. I think the best Terra Pokemon are going to be Pokemon that do that both, that do both, that have really strong offensive coverage or, or offensive benefits from getting the two times stab and just have a ton of different coverage or hit really hard, but also the defensive typing would help them out a lot. I think a, a good example is, is a couple of good, good examples that I thought of real quick is something like a water type Garchomp. Well, Garchomp has Aqua Tail. So just like just like a lander is T, the the ice beams that you usually are going to try to use against your the guard jump to get you know get rid of it are now not very effective and the the fairy type the fairy types that try to switch in and be the guard jump you know now it's not weak to fairy maybe you run like an assault vest uh water terra water guard jump and you've got all this different coverage maybe you throw like poison jab on here and you've got aqua tail which now has Doubles the stab, you know, which now has the, yeah, double, double damage, basically, because you have the two times modifier from the terrestrialization, and you're no longer weak to ice, and you're no longer weak to fairy, you're now neutral it, neutral to it, and you're still a, a really, a water type that's firing off, you know, stab earthquake, because you still retain your old stab, and you're beating other dragons with dragon claw, and just Garchomp has a ton of different coverage, like he's got iron head, he can run poison jab, Maybe Poison Jab is a better example over, like, like Rock Slide, I guess. But, uh, you know, just something that he can use both. You know, he turns into a water type, but he also benefits from being a scary offensive water type, which is crazy good stats and such. Or maybe a Grass-type Gyarados. You're no longer weak to Electric, but you also have Power Whip, and your Power Whip is even hitting even harder. And so you're a really scary Grass-type that's Dragon Dancing, or you can know Earth Ground-type could be the same thing here. Ground or Grass, Gyarados, either one works there. Um, or maybe you go steel type hydreigon you know you go the steel type for defensively for defensive utility uh, and you have levitate so you've got a lot of defensiveness to it you know your steel type you're you're no longer weak to fairy it's a quick it's a quick turnaround the levitate on a steel type is really crazy but then you also have your flash cannon coverage is now hitting even harder and you really just are blowing up the fairy types that are going to counter your hydreigon or maybe an electric type Latios because you've got, you know, kind of same thing. Your electric type with Levitate. Now you have no weaknesses. And your Thunderbolt coverage that you're probably going to run on this thing anyways now hits even harder. And you're still firing off Stab, Draco, Meteor, and, and you've got Psyshock, and you've got Bolt Ice Beam for Bolt Beam coverage. These are the Pokemon, these four that I just talked about. And, and examples like this, like this Latios, I think is the crazy, this is one of the best examples. I think these are the Pokemon we're going to see Terrastalize the most and what's really going to happen with terrestrializing but because it doesn't doesn't cost an item it doesn't cost an ability or anything any pokemon can do it. it's going to be very flexible so i think i think pokemon like this that are going to be really good in the meta that can just you know handle different things and can and can use the the new terra type but great offensively and defensively i think this is what we're going to see uh, it's i'm kind of all over the place but it's okay I think this is what we're going to see is, is Pokemon that can handle, that get good offense, offensive benefit from it and defensive benefit from it. And you, so that way you can you can just build your team normally with these with these flexible Pokemon and then terrestrialize whoever you need to in the moment. You know, another example I just thought of is like a Porygon 2 turning into a ghost type. Let me just throw the ghost gem on there. Turning Porygon 2 into a ghost type, you get the... the defensive benefit of now you're no longer weak to fighting you can no longer be fake outed and you have shadow ball for coverage so there you go now you know porygon 2 is a really bulky pokemon that sets like trick room you've got recover so you can run something like 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 a trick room you have try attack and then you've got shadow ball for coverage it's usually something like ice beam or something um but maybe you're going a more offensive porygon build and you're still running you know trick room try attack and you have shadow ball for that good stab and defensive typing as you know ghost type and then um recover let's say or icy wind something like that so you can still be your your really 
irritating Porygon, and you can either you know turn into a ghost type so you're no longer about not going to get fake outed, and you can set up your trick room for free, or there's a fighting type on the on the on the field, and you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna not be weak to you anymore. Or it could just even be like, oh, hey, I'm just going to turn into a ghost type and be really scary offensively now, too. Or say something like Urshifu. Let's say if Urshifu's in this game, the one way to counter Urshifu is, is a good fairy type. You know, something like a Tapu Fini. But what if this Urshifu turned into a poison type? <laughs> this thing is now no longer weak to fairy. It has poison jab for coverage, too. Or Terra Blast for coverage, you know. And now you're dealing with this. Now you're dealing with this really strong Pokemon that is hitting the Steel types with with close combat, that is hitting Psychic types with with Wicked Blow and Sucker Punch, and is now sniping Fairy types and one shotting every Fairy type in sight because it's now you know adaptability Poison Jab. You know something like this, like you get the, you get the defensive benefit from it by no longer being weak to your Quad type. And the offensive benefit of now you're just going to, you turn into, you know, scared of every fairy type to now you're a fairy killer. And so it's up to the opponent to see if they have a, a team that can handle this this immediate switch over to a poison type Urshifu. And that's what I think is going to, you know, shape VGC, VGC teams in Gen 9. It's going to be flexible Pokemon. It's going to be flexible teams that can not only terrestrialize anybody and you know you know create create a new crazy situation like a poison type fairy killer urshifu or an electric type with no weaknesses latios that's still dropping stab draco meteors or you know etc and but that can also handle when the gyarados on the opposing pokemon's or opposing enemy's team turns into a grass type or when they turn their landers into a water type, or when they're trying to sweep you with an ice type Regilecki. That's what I think is going to happen with Gen 9 VGC. And I think it's really, really cool. I think it's, you know, some Pokemon having their gimmicks being like their whole viability is, is you know, it's it's cool. You know, having the Gastrodon be the counter to water types, you know, that gives the viability, it's cool, whatever. But I think, you know, just having flexible Pokemon, and maybe this, maybe this opens up, some room in the metagame for Pokemon that have been flexible, but, you know, maybe overshadowed by the gimmicks. You know, maybe maybe some Pokemon like... I'm going to throw a random example out. Like a, like a Walrein. How about... Like a Walrein, who's, a, who's overall a pretty good Pokemon. You know, it's bulky. It has some good moves like you've got on core. It can be like a bulky water type with... with a Icy Wind. If I can type this correctly. With Icy Wind, you can throw it... And a, and a hail team or something something like a walrein might just be good now because it's flexible and can handle when a gyarados turns into a grass type because he used to wall the gyarados out now and now when it turns into a grass type it can hit it really hard with ice beam you know this is just this is just a random a super random example but like you know this is this is why i'm excited to see what is going to happen in, in the future of of you know vgc and gen 9 of vgc and i think terrestrializing is gonna be really cool i think there's a lot of really cool pokemon that can benefit from this gimmick and it's i'm excited i'm excited and i wanted to share this this kind of thought process video through you guys so thank you all for tuning in if you want to see more vgc content from me please let me know i do want to expand a little bit uh scarlet and violet's coming out soon i'm going to be playing that i'm going to be just doing a normal playthrough i think and i'll stream that when i when i play you know Probably not all the time, but I'll stream a little bit here and there. And, yeah, thank you guys for tuning into the channel. Thank you guys for all your support. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.